rich don't work for money. Don't you touch that stuff. The people that are being screwed today are the poor middle class because they work for money. If you're poor, you'll always be poor. That's really hard for people to understand. Yeah, the money will disappear that fast. Just like most pro athletes, you know, they make millions of dollars and what, 65% are bankrupt five years later? It's because they come from poor families. Now you tell them that, they get very angry at you. It's not just a rich fault, you know, you guys ripped me off. Government ripped me off. But unfortunately, what Mr. Lipton was saying, it's passed down genetically. You have to make mistakes to learn, but our schools punish you for making mistakes. And then they also punish you for asking for help because that's called cheating. I call it cooperation. Yeah. So that everything is opposite from school. You know, entrepreneurs are not going to make good employees. Do you think Bezos became a billionaire paying taxes? I wouldn't bet on that. He doesn't pay taxes. Trump doesn't pay taxes. I don't pay taxes. So the question is, how do, guys, how do guys like us do it, is the question you should be asking. Because the rich people make the rules. We study different things. I wouldn't go to school. You want to be an employee, you choose to be an employee. You want to be an entrepreneur, you choose to be an entrepreneur. But you've got to study. They're two, two different people. What you have to study is different. Mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, but it's a different study. The trouble is our school system trains us to be employees. Go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, pay your taxes, get out of debt, and invest in the stock market. That makes you poor. So how do I get rich? I borrow money and I buy assets with it. The poor person borrows money and buys liabilities like purses, cars, houses, and they get poorer and poorer and poorer. Why would you save money when they're printing money? Because, Because that's it, what you've been told to do. Of course. So question that. I questioned all that. Why would I save money when they print money? That's what happened in 1971 when President Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. They can print as much as they like. Then they tell you, so go to school, you get a job, become an employee. You pay taxes because you're working for money. Then they tell you to save money. Do you know why they tell you to save money? It's the banks run the world. The rich run the world. They don't care if you're communist or capitalist. The big mistake I see young people make is they focus here. And the words are, I want to do what I love. That's the truth. You see, in real life, sometimes you have to do what you hate. Like people think I like to write books. I hate writing books. But it fills my purpose in life. Not my passion, my purpose. Because my purpose was to get here. A lot of these guys get trapped here doing what they love. So when I was in my, before my 20s, I knew I wanted to go there, and I wasn't doing what I love. I had to learn what I didn't want to learn. I had sometimes to do what I hated. I had to learn about taxes. I had to learn about debt. I had to take classes. I had to learn about insurance. So I was doing a lot of things I hated doing so I could come over here. These guys never do this because they want to live that passion. I want my passion. The reason I make more money is because it's not what I'm doing what I love. I do sometimes what I hate so I can have the assets that I love. You know, a question I ask all over the world, what does school teach you about money? And the answer is nothing. And that's not a mistake. That's not an accident. But the way to keep the poor and middle class working hard is never teach them what the rich know. It's what the rich teach their kids about money, the poor and middle class do not. But our school system will never tell us that because they're part of the process. Fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. And today in the world, America especially, is this gap between the rich and everybody else. And I know the game of the rich. You know, my, my rich dad taught me, you know it because you're the banker. Rich dad's lesson number one, the rich don't work for money. Don't you touch that stuff. The game the bankers and the rich play is different than what they teach you in school. And that's the story of rich dad, poor dad. You know, my poor dad, PhD, 
Washington stands for poor, helpless, and desperate. They don't know anything about money. And he's teach, they're teaching our kids. And my rich dad was an entrepreneur who never finished school. So all of the pieces of the puzzle, and when Fuller scolding me back in 83, the pieces of the puzzle and my life started to come together. It's not get a job, work hard, save money, and invest in a well-diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. The financial industry is two things, debt and taxes. Debt and taxes. And we still tell kids to go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, and get out of debt. Now, who tells them to do that? That's the most ridiculous thing there is. They're afraid they might make a mistake. The good little students in school. Go to school, get a job, don't make mistakes. Well, it's not risky. I mean, to me, what's What's risky is having a job and paying taxes and saving money because they're printing it. That's the worst thing of all. The people that are being screwed today are the poor middle class because they work for money. You know, the banker friends, they're not working for money. They have money working for them. Yeah. Right. Very big difference in mentality. Well, he said, I said, I want you to teach me about money. So it was, I said, why should I teach you? You go to school, your dad's not, your dad, my poor dad's not going to teach you. He goes, he says, I said, oh, finally, he acquiesced. He said, okay. He says, but if I teach you, you work for me for free. <laughs> and I said, why for free? My dad, my poor dad went nuts. He says, because if I pay you, you think like an employee. Your brains will, your brain will change. If you learn never to work for money, you'll be a rich man. So my, my dad, the poor dad, Danford, Northwestern University of Chicago, the head of education for the state of Hawaii, candidate for lieutenant governor of Hawaii, as a Republican of all things, they know nothing about money and they teach our kids. They're good people, but 90, 80% are good people. 20% just are there for the pension and the paycheck, you know that. My poor dad said, go talk to your best friend's father, Mike's father. I said, why is that? He said, because Mike's father's an entrepreneur. And you know, nine years old, so what's an entrepreneur? And he said, well, I'm an employee. They're two different people, mindset-wise. Well, it came from a, a lesson before Rich Dad. I was in Sunday school. My Sunday school teacher was a young, pretty woman, you know, and she said, I'm like nine. And she goes, why were the three wise men wise? You know, I go, because they were rich. You know, they, gave, they, gave, they gave the swaddling Jesus gold, frankincense, and mirth. So they had to be rich guys, I said. And she goes, no, no, that's not it. Well, they had gold, frankincense, and mirth. That's not it. I said, why were they wise? She said, what made them wise was they always sought the best teacher. And she says, if you're going to be a success from your life, you've got to find the best teachers. And so with that, when my poor dad said, go seek out your rich dad, I was just following her advice. So I've had a habit ever since then, or a policy, if I find out there's a great teacher, and a great teacher is somebody who comes from the inside, not the outside. You know, when I was in flight school, I swear to God, my pilot, my instructors could fly because I flew with them. But in school, you don't know if your instructor is for real or not. That's where the fake teacher comes from. When I was in my MBA program, I was still in the Marine Corps. I came back from the war. I'm in the MBA program and, and my MBA accounting teacher doesn't know accounting and I'm going, I'm going nuts. I'm not an accountant, but I knew he wasn't an accountant also, so I took him on and said, I said, are you an accountant? He goes, I have a master's in accounts. I said, that's not the question. Are you an accountant? I have a master's in accounts. And I stood up and I, Do you have a, are you an accountant? Same answer, I said, you're a fake. You don't know what you're talking about. And to this day, when I listen to what people are teaching, kids about accountancy, it's bad accountancy. 
You know, assets put money in your pocket, liabilities take money from your pocket. They count anything of value as an asset. They count your car as an asset, your house as an asset. When it's really taking money from your pocket. Your retirement plan, guess what? It's a liability. It's taking money from your pocket every month. And whose pocket does it go to? Wall Street or City of London. And, and, and that's why, as you and I know, these funds, you know, they sit there, they go, assets under management. That's what they're paid on. Well, the reason the rich don't work for money is number one expense is tax. See, there's three kinds of income, earned, portfolio, passive. So earned income is if I get a job, that's earned income. If I'm a doctor or a programmer, that's earned income, because I'm working for it. If I buy, a, if I buy a, let's say, Apple for $10, and I send it for 20, that's uh, portfolio income, capital gains. Yeah. But passive income, which is cash flow, is never taxed. So it's not, and so all these guys are screaming right now in America, tax the rich, I said, good luck. Because most of the guys complaining, they don't know the three kinds of income, and the rich don't have jobs anyway. They have assets. And so the average schmo out there, a poor guy, you know, sent the kid to school, they don't learn this. So that's why in fake, as you were talking about it, is that newspaper article about Jared Kushner. Yeah. And he explains how the Trumps and the Kushners don't pay taxes and make millions of dollars. And the reporter couldn't understand him because they're not, our schools will never teach you that three types of income. And they judged him and say they're wrong and it's cheating. And we see that over and over again, Amazon not paying taxes. What do you say to people when they come up to you and say, Robert, it's not fair. It's not fair they're not paying taxes. Well, there's always three sides to a coin, you know, heads, tails, and the edge. You know, so which side of the coin are you on? From my side, it's fair. But this is the difference. Everybody can do the same thing I do, because the tax laws are for everybody. You know, we don't say, well, the tax laws are only for the rich. No, the tax laws are for everybody to use if you have the right financial education. And the reason I'm an advocate of financial education, without that education, you have to pay taxes. You see, very few people will buy what I do, make a million dollars and pay zero tax. That takes, and my rich dad taught me that playing Monopoly. That's how it started, you know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. Or the McDonald's formula, I write about it here. McDonald's, Ray Kroc. Yeah. McDonald's is in the real estate business, so they sell hamburgers, but they buy real estate, so they pay no taxes. You know, this guy Bezos, well, he's $16 billion. How much tax did they pay on that 16 billion? You know, a question I ask all over the world, what does school teach you about money? And the answer is nothing. And that's not a mistake. That's not an accident. I knew that, most people know that. But the way to keep the poor and middle class working hard is never teach them what the rich know. It's what the rich teach their kids about money, the poor and middle class do not.